Welcome to Soup Top Recipes. Today, we're making a classic Cantonese dish, the Hong Kong style wonton noodle soup. I know there are tons of recipes out there already, but today I'm showing you the authentic way to make it. It's a very interesting recipe, so let's get started. This is a time consuming recipe because we're gonna start with making the fish powder. You need flounder fish. If you can't find the whole flounder, you can try flounder fillet. I prefer the whole fish so I get to keep the bones. But on the other hand, you have to gut the fish yourself, which is quite annoying. Open up the stomach and remove all the inner organs. Cut the fish into big pieces. Wash it well with clean water. Especially, you need to remove the black film that is on the inside of the fish. Rinse them out. Get your grill ready. I only used one layer of charcoal, so it is the low heat. Place the fish on the rack, but as far as possible away from the heat. You want to slowly dehydrate the fish without burning it. Cover the lid. I just let it sit there overnight or until it is completely dry. You can also use a dehydrator to do this. I don't have one, so I use a grill. The benefit of using a grill is that you can get the smoky flavor. The next day, everything is cool now, all the charcoal is finished, the fish is completely dry, and it smells really good. Smoky and seafoody. At this moment, if you try to bend it, it doesn't crack immediately, which means it is not crispy enough. If you grind the fish in a blender when it's not crispy, it will become fish meat floss, which is not what we want. We want it to be fish powder. In order to do that, we need the fish to be crispy. Roast the fish directly above the low flame, you should be able to hear some light crackling sound and smell those nice toasty flavor. You want the fish to have these black and brown charred mark. Sometimes the fish might be on fire. It's okay, just shake it a little bit and the fire should stop. Once you get both sides of the fish toasted, keep doing the next piece. If you don't have a flame gas stove, that is okay. You can use a cast iron skillet, cut the fish into smaller pieces, and toast them until you get some charred mark. I prefer to do it directly on the flame is because it comes in handy. I don't need to wash a cast iron skillet, but both ways work perfectly. Now, let's take a look of the fish. Look how crispy that is. That cracking sound is so fascinating to me. And let's see how the fish come out of the cast iron skillet. It is also extremely flaky. Perfect. Put everything in a blender and grind it into a powder. I find out if you use a big blender like this, the fish pieces just fly around and it's hard to grind them into a complete powder. They look rough like sand. So I decided to grind it again by using a coffee grinder, or you can call it a spice grinder. And this time, it came out so nice and fine. Let it go through a sieve just to get rid of some stubborn pieces. Discard those, and you have your fish powder made. This is the key ingredient why Cantonese wonton noodle soup is so unique and delicious. It's full of umami flavor. We call it the natural MSG. Of course, there are restaurants that use MSG because this stuff is expensive and takes a long time to make. But trust me, if you tried it, you're gonna want to put it in every broth or soup you make. Store it in a sealed container and keep refrigerated. It will last a few months. Next, Let's make the broth. It is also time consuming. If you don't have time, it's okay to use store-bought stock. You will need one and a half pound of pork bones. If you don't eat pork, you can use beef bones, one pound of chicken bones, 
We're gonna soak them in clean water for about two hours. This is to help to release the bloody impurities that's inside the bones. Two hours later, the liquid became an unpleasant looking. That is what we are trying to get rid of. Take the bones out and discard the water. Set the bones aside. I got some shell on shrimps here. We're making a pork and shrimp filling today. Peel them and save the shrimp shells because we're gonna use that to make the broth. Get a big pot. Add some oil. We're going to saute the shrimp shells. This is important when making seafood stock. You definitely want to brown it first, or else it develops an unpleasant fishy smell. If you can get head on shrimp, that will be even better because shrimp head provides more umami flavor. When you smell a really nice shrimpy flavor, add the bones in. You can brown the bones or not, up to you. But I do think it brings out more flavors, so I slightly browned it. Pour in two and a half liters of water. Bring it to a boil. Use a mesh strainer to fish out those floating foam. Turn the heat to low and leave it simmer for about three hours. During this three hours, you can come back and check the broth once or twice. If you see the liquid is evaporated and the bones are uncovered, you can slowly add more hot water along the edge of the pot. That way, you don't create a big splash, so we can make a clear broth. Use the mesh strainer to fish out the impurities again. Keep simmering the broth. While waiting, you got plenty of time to make the wontons. You will need some ground pork. Don't be scared if you see me chopping my own pork. That's just me. You can use store-bought ground meat. Not a problem. If you don't eat pork, you can switch it with beef. Add the pork to a big mixing bowl. This is the shrimp that we just peeled. Roughly cut it into these small pieces. Don't chop it too fine. We want to be able to chew the shrimp bits in the filling. You can buy smaller shrimp for this recipe because they're cheaper, and you're chopping them anyway. Add the shrimp to the mixing bowl as well, along with one tablespoon of soy sauce, one tablespoon of Chinese cooking wine, one tablespoon of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of fish sauce. You probably think that fish sauce is a Thai ingredient. Actually, we use it quite often in South of China. Keep adding a quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, three cloves of garlic that I pressed with a garlic presser, one teaspoon of grated ginger, cracking one egg. Take three tablespoons of the stock from the pot and allow it to cool a little bit. Then add it to the mixing bowl. Drizzle in two teaspoons of sesame oil. Last but not least, the fish powder that we made. If you didn't have time to make it, you can use one teaspoon of MSG here. Mix the filling until the liquid is absorbed. Then stir the meat within one direction for four to five minutes. I also like to grab the meat and throw it back to the bowl hard. This helps to develop the texture. Keep slapping the meat until it gets really sticky. Adding half cup of diced scallion and mix it well. The reason I added the last is that I want to keep the freshness as much as possible. Since this is already a complicated recipe, so I'm not making my own wrappers today. I do have a recipe though. I'll put the link in the description just in case you want to make your own. I got the pack that says Hong Kong style because we're making Hong Kong wonton noodle soup. But really, any wonton wrap will work. They usually come frozen, so take them out 40 minutes in advance to let them defrost. They are pretty easy to get. Just check your local Oriental store. Take one piece of the wrapper. Put some filling in the middle, about two teaspoons. Fold the sheet in half, then gather the edge together and pinch to close it. 
Yes, wonton is that easy to make. I always think that someone got frustrated when making dumplings, so he just roughly pinched the wrapper together, and that is how wonton was invented. I'm not sure if that's true though, but it's possible. <laughs> This recipe is enough to make sixty to seventy wontons, way more than what I can eat in one day. Good thing is that they do freeze well. But be sure to leave some space between them, or else they will stick together in the freezer. Next time you want to eat them again, don't need to defrost; just directly cook them. They will take a bit longer to cook compared to the fresh wontons. Okay, the broth has been simmered for three hours. Take out all the bones. You might want to ask me why didn't I add any spices and aromatics to infuse the stock. Because we are making the original flavor broth, which allows the fish powder to stand out in this recipe, use a mesh strainer to sift out all those little bits. You can let it go through a cheesecloth, but I think my broth is pretty clean. A mesh strainer will do a fine job. I think we're ready to assemble the wonton noodle soup. Get a noodle bowl. Add about two teaspoons of soy sauce. Two teaspoons of fish sauce, one teaspoon of fish powder, a little bit salt to taste. Pour in two cups of the broth that we made. We're using the fish powder to infuse the broth, which is why it's so important to grind the powder really fine, or else it will affect the experience when you taste the broth. I'm using the store-bought wonton noodles because I really don't feel like making it from scratch. My arthritis is pretty bad today. I do have a recipe though. I'll put the link in the description. Take one portion of the noodles, throw it into the boiling water, stir to loosen it up. Fresh noodles cook really fast. Will only take a couple minutes. Take the noodles out. And we're gonna use the same pot to boil some wontons. Fresh wontons will take about five to six minutes to cook. Don't overcook them, or else the wrapper becomes mushy. Throw in some baby bok choy immediately. Then you have your wonton noodle soup ready. We like to put some greens in our noodle soup. That makes the dish so much healthier. If you can't find baby bok choy, you can use broccoli or spinach. Garnish it with some diced scallion, and you're ready to serve. This bowl here might not look that special, but it is what most Cantonese people grew up with. It's everywhere. Could be downstairs of your apartment. You can just walk to it and start your day with this nice and comfy soup. It can be next to a school, and kids passing by it every day. Very cheap, a dollar or two, and it gives you all day energy. I hope you give this a try soon. If you did, leave me a comment. Let me know how it goes. For the printable recipe, you can click the link in the description to go to my website. I used to put the recipes directly in the description. But it only allows me to write a certain amount of characters. Most of the time, I just can't put the full recipe in. So hope this well-organized page will make things easier. All you need to do is to click the link in the description, and you will find the recipe. I just launched this website not so long ago. It's not perfect yet, but I'll make it better. If you want to support me to keep this channel and the website going, consider joining my Patreon, where you can message me directly and have the early access to my videos. The link is right here. I want to say thank you to all my patrons. I appreciate your ongoing support, which encouraged me a lot. Thank you for watching again, and I'll see you next time. Bye, Mr. Pan.